Welcome to the Farms.com Risk Management Marketing School video being sponsored and uh, brought to you by DeKalb Brand Seeds to educate producers across Canada on how to do a better job of uh, commodity grain marketing. So in this sixth video series, we're going to look closely at currencies and their impact on grain markets over time. We'll look at the past to gain some insight into what the future may bring when it comes to uh, currencies. So let's have a quick look at uh, this is the U.S. dollar index uh, going all the way back to 1985, 1985 to 2011. You can see what it's done over many, many years. Actually, in the last decade or so, you can see the downward moving slope on that U.S. dollar. And uh, 2011 approaching the lows of 2007-8. Uh, so you can see on the chart here, it's creating a, a double top and if we don't break the lows of 72 we could actually be creating a uh, triple bottom which is very bullish so right now it's it's bearish but uh, could turn into a bullish pattern so what is the US dollar index the US dollar index is a geometrically averaged calculation of six currencies weighted against the US dollar it's been in existence since 1973 and we've got um, the euro at 57.6 percent weighting Canadian dollar at 9.1 Japanese yen 13.6 Sweden Sweden krona at 4.2 British pound 11.9 and Swiss franc at 3.6 now this is a seasonal chart here and you can see from the pattern whether it's 5, 15 or 30 years that we tend to peak somewhere in that June, July period and then we have that decline going uh, into a, the second half of each year. Uh, this is the uh, 2011 US dollar index daily futures chart for March futures, which is almost going to expire, but you can see the downward sloping trend. But from, some, from time to time, you got that little spike and that's being really caused lately by the Euro debt crisis that we've been talking about since last year. Uh, but those spikes are short-lived and then the uh, US dollar resumes its downtrend. This US dollar really is being affected by a lot of factors, uh, Euro dollar being one of them, but uh, that high debt to GDP ratio in the United States at 75% uh, of, of GDP is, is, is an overhanging factor that uh, is um, causing this weakness in that US dollar. Um, and uh, you can see from this chart there's a uh, there's a pattern here that shows a, um, a top head and shoulder formation. So you get the the left shoulder, the head, and then the right shoulder, and that's very, very bearish going forward. Um, this is the relationship that, that U.S. dollar has to grain commodities, and in black is the U.S. dollar. Purple is the, uh, believe, is the wheat futures. Dark blue is the soybean, and then um, light blue is the corn futures. And you can see there's an uh, inverse relation. As U.S. dollar comes down, those grain commodities move higher and vice versa. Why does that happen? Uh, simply because as that U.S. dollar moves down, that foreigner's purchasing power actually increases. It makes that commodity or U.S. commodity a lot cheaper. Prime example, uh, over the last three, four, five years, as soybean futures have rallied to highs, U.S. dollar has moved lower, making those soybean, uh, that soybean commodity cheaper. So China just continues to buy because they're, they're, uh, uh, the, the demand continues to increase. This is the U.S. dollar versus the euro dollar. Uh, so, um, you know, what relationship that, does that have? Again, because of the big weighting at 57.6%, uh, you can see the inverse relationship. When uh, the, by the way, the the um, euro dollar is in uh, black and the light blue is the uh, US dollar index. So when you see the US dollar index moving higher, you see the Euro dollar moving lower. In fact, in 2011, uh, we got the Euro dollar up 3.4%, US dollar down 3.4%. So, um, and then this is the Canadian dollar. It's a long-term chart going all the way back to 1976, I believe about 35, 36 years. Uh, so you can see that over time, the, U the Canadian dollar has been really below par versus that US dollar for many, many years, except the exception is 2008 and now 2011. And we're just below the 2007 high of about 107 versus that US dollar. Uh, this is a seasonal chart in the, in the uh, Canadian dollar. And you can see that it typically uh, tends to hit its highs through November of each year. 
Um, and then this is the 2011 March daily futures chart uh, for that Canadian dollar. You can see the upward sloping trend now approaching about 103. Uh, this slightest move here from par to 103 is largely because of the higher crude oil price. Uh, why? Because of the unrest in Libya. We've had some unrest in 2011. It started in Tunisia, beginning of 2011, uh, spread to Egypt, now spreading to um, Libya. Some experts think it could spread to Saudi Arabia. It's causing concern that uh, you know uh, the flow of uh, oil exports may slow down. But Saudis are actually making up the difference. Market's not convinced yet. So we got uh, this higher oil, and every time uh, crude oil moves up a dollar per bush or per barrel, sorry, you can add about a zero. 0.002 to that Canadian dollar. So a $10 move, and we've actually seen about a $15 move now in about seven trading days, uh, will actually, uh, this is the chart here, uh, will actually add about three cents, three to four cents to that Canadian dollar. So there's many other factors at play, of course. A higher Canadian dollar really um, is uh, being affected by any good news coming from the U.S. We're their largest trading partner. Demand for commodities, which we have a lot of. Uh, Canada's number two in oil reserves, 177 uh, million barrels, only second to Saudi Arabia. Uh, so, uh, And then, of course, a trending lower U.S. dollar can also support a higher dollar. This is the um, Canadian dollar versus the Dow Jones Adjuster average. Uh, so in light blue is the Canadian dollar, and the black or dark blue is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And you can see that it just has a similar pattern over time. So if, if you're positive about the U.S. economy, about corporate profits, then that's going to support a higher Canadian dollar because we're their biggest trading partner. Whatever happens in the U.S. is going to happen up here uh, in, in the north here in Canada. So in summary, the U.S. dollar, the euro, and the Canadian dollar can have a big impact over time to those commodity and grain prices. Lower U.S. dollar makes U.S. commodities cheaper, while a higher Canadian dollar makes Canadian uh, goods more expensive. So, for example, canola demand may come down because of the higher uh, dollar or exports may, may slow down. Um, Higher Canadian dollar can also impact basis, widen that basis for those cash crop producers, and unfortunately lower your revenue or profits for a livestock producer. Knowing and having some idea of past trends in currencies and their impact on commodities is critical so that farmer can do a better job or be a more successful marketer. It's never perfect. Remember, we can manage the risk and the volatility. We cannot predict the future. What is your marketing plan? In our next video series, we'll look at the global economies and its impact on grain prices. I hope that uh, you've learned something today and I've given you some, uh, uh, I've said, shed some light and some insight on currencies. Thanks for joining me today and we look forward to seeing you next time.